Ay, madre. Okay. Today is it's a regular city commission meeting in the city of West Miami. Today is Wednesday, May fourth, seven thirty one p.m. Call this meeting to order for the invocation. Major Delgado, please. Good evening. Please borrow our heads. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you give us on a daily basis and many times, the times that we may take them for granted. Lord, we ask that you give clarity and guidance to our city leaders and newly elected officials so that they continue to make the right decisions when it comes to the wellness of the city and its residents. Please protect our military servicemen and women as well as our law enforcement officers and firefighters so that they may return home safely after their tour of duty. We ask all of this in your holy name. Amen. Chief Avila for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Yes, uh, good evening. Roll call item. Item B, Mayor Eric Diaz Padron. Here. Vice Mayor Juan Blanes. Present. Commissioner Candida Blanca. Yes. Commissioner Luciano Suarez. Yes. Commissioner Ivan Chavez Jr. Here. Mayor, you have quorum. Okay, can we take all of the minutes together? Can I get a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Okay. Motion or second, can you call the roll? Yes. Commissioner Blanca, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Suarez. Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Vice Mayor Blanes? Yes. Mayor uh, Diaz Padron? Yes. 5 0, item passes. Thank you. All right, at this moment, uh, Madam Clerk, I think we're going to defer item A um, from the agenda because the family's not here. I, and out of, I want to take out of order item B for the fire chief who is here with us. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor, yes. good evening, sir. Uh, Please be advised that they are, uh, Chief Kaminsky is waiting for Maria Reyes, who's bringing in the, um, the um, PowerPoint presentation. Got it. So we'll, let's move on to uh, public comments. Is anyone here for public comment? No. Uh, report to the city manager. Thank you. I have a verbal report this evening. Mr. Mayor, I have, um, I have a report from the accounting department on the expenses related to the Easter egg hunt, a very successful one, if I may say. The city spent a total of $10,154.38. We received $1,000 in contributions. We estimated that the event would cost $8,500. So we came in pretty close uh, thanks to the $1,000 donation. So that is my report. I will provide everyone with copies, which has a line item on all the expenses associated with the event. The next item in my report is the City of West Miami Recreation Center has published, published the 2022 summer camp. Um, I sent out copies to the mayor and commissioner so that you could share those with your constituents. The summer camp uh, flyer is already posted in the city's website, our social media pages, and we sent out a blast email to those residents that have recorded their email address with the city. So at your leisure, please take a look at the flyer so that you can talk to our neighbors about the services. The next item in my report, I've made a note, the city has started to collect budget data. On June 1st, 2022, as customary, this, the Office of Property Appraisal will be delivering the preliminary assessment values for the City of West Miami tax rolls. So that's gonna give us a pretty good idea of where the city is going to be in terms of assessed values and, and what we should be planning for. On July 1st, this, uh, the property appraiser's office will, will be rolling out the 
DR420 form, which is the formula that sets the millage rate um, to an exact amount budgeted at 95%. So budget, uh, we are in budget mode and we will be working with the mayor and commissioners in the coming weeks so that we can entertain your projects and revisit those that have been accomplished and those that have not. And so we'll address all those issues and anything new that the new members of the city commission bring to the table. Um, at the next meeting, we're, we're going to need to select our tentative and final budget hearing dates for the month of September. The preliminary budget, which is the manager's budget, gets presented at the second meeting in July. We have started negotiations with the South Florida Police Benevolent Association. We had a productive first meeting this past Monday. We will be meeting and regrouping in the next two weeks. <coughs> and I will be reaching out to the mayor and commissioners um, whenever we have something that we would like to, for where, where the membership agrees, and obviously to bring it before the commission. Last but not least, I was advised this afternoon via an email from District 6 office that Commissioner Sosa is donating $6,150 for vouchers for children who live in the city of West Miami and the surrounding area, children within District 6. Um, it'll pay for 30 children to participate six weeks in the summer camp program in the city of West Miami. That concludes my <coughs> report. I have some other pending matters that I spoke to Commissioner uh, Vice Mayor Blanes about yesterday, and I don't know if you want me to go into these real quick just to give everyone a status of where we're at, or yeah, if we yeah, take it up. No, might as well, yeah, while they're preparing the PowerPoint. Okay, well thank you. Um, the street signs, um, Vice Mayor Blanes, you'll be happy to hear that the city opened bids today for the new City of West Miami welcome signs. Uh, we should have something for you to consider at the next agenda. We're reviewing the bids and um, I'm sure the city engineer and the director of public works will be putting together uh, something and meeting with, with us and we'll bring a unified recommendation at the <coughs> next commission meeting. As for the block street signs, they continue to be work in progress. However, there have been delays for the past three months due to the <coughs> preparation of the induction ceremony uh, the mayor's office is being remodeled, which was a project that had been in the pipeline for quite some time. We felt that due to the very deteriorated condition of the old office, we need to expedite the remodeling project. This employee who's working on this project was ill for two months and unable to work. Therefore, this is the very same employee that works on preparing on making the preparations for the actual <coughs> block streets signs. And obviously, I can't go into any health details here. Code enforcement, the city has been uh, addressing code enforcement of hedges. Uh, this effort was initiated by my office um, due to the number of homes where some hedges are over 9 to 12 <coughs> feet in height in some of the front setback areas. Um, this has obviously nothing to do. We recognize we do have a, an amendment to the ordinance. so. I actually had a conversation with Mr. Pena and, and Mr. Garcia, and moving forward, we will be working um, <clears throat> on a courtesy system. We're gonna be using door hangers, reminding our residents of what the regulations are, and we're going to try to work, um, and I call it an honor system, uh, before we have to resort to any type of violations. Um, there is an issue that I know has been um, an issue brought uh, forth by Vice Mayor Blanes, our garbage cans. Some of the residents of the city of West Miami have been given a courtesy notice. Some residents have complied. Others cannot comply because they're simply frail and are unable to bring the garbage bins inside their property. I'm going to be meeting with Mr. Pana to see if we can get a list of those residents that cannot bring their car garbage cans to the back or to the side of the property to see if our sanitation crew can identify those with special needs so that we can go ahead and bring these garbage cans in. We're going to need a little bit of time on that, but we will work with an honor system again, if you would, on these items. Um, so I, again, I look forward to working with you, hearing from all of you on these matters. 
We are not turning a blind eye on things that have been in progress, but when you have a small staff, you have to sort of prioritize. Every day, you have new priorities and you have different situations. So I just want you to know that the work is in progress. We're not ignoring it. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to inquire at Thank your you. leisure. Thank you, sir. Um, Chief, are you ready or you still need some IT work? Hi, Maria. Good to you. How are you? <coughs> Chief, good to have you. Good evening. Uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, good evening, Mayor uh, Diaz Perdon, uh, Vice Mayor Blanes, uh, Commissioners Blanco, Suarez, and Chavez, uh, Village Manager Aguiar, uh, as well as Attorney and uh, my name is Alan Kaminsky, Fire Chief for Miami-Dade Fire Rescue. It's a true privilege and honor to be here uh, in front of uh, West Miami this evening. Uh, just a little background on me, a 27-year veteran of the fire department. I've uh, been with Miami-Dade Fire Rescue since 1995. I was promoted to Fire Chief in December of 2019. Uh, certified firefighter paramedic, I held all ranks within the civil service and been all throughout in regards to uh, the fire department. Well, next slide, sir. A little department overview. Uh, we originated in 1935, largest fire department in the Southeast United States, among the top 10 largest in the nation. Uh, currently, we have over 2,800 employees, uh, 2,100 sworn uh, certified firefighter, EMT, or paramedics, uh, as well as 700 civilian support staff. Uh, we have 157 frontline units, uh, 62 ALS transport units, uh, 60 suppression units, uh, 71 fire rescue stations, uh, two full-time air rescue helicopters, two full-time fire boats. Uh, we're accredited by the Commission on Fire Accreditation International, and our insurance service office uh, ISO rating is a 2-2X. Next slide, please. A few other highlights. In regards to EMS, emergency medical services, uh, Miami-Dade County residents have the highest survival rate in the nation from blocked coronary artery disease. Uh, we're part of the STEMI network, which represents ST elevation, uh, myocardial infarction, also part of a county-wide stroke network. Uh, the Office of Emergency Management, OEM, also resides within uh, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue. Uh, they manage the county's emergency operations center, known as the EOC, uh, coordinates emergency response recovery plans, and they're also accredited by the Emergency Management Accreditation Program, known as EMAP. Next slide. Uh, in 2021, we had four classes hired, so we had the privilege of 96 uh, new firefighters uh, join us in the rank and file. Uh, other highlights in 2021. Uh, we had a few new units put in service, uh, Rescue 77 down in Homestead, uh, new Fireboat 21. Uh, we also had a new vessel, Fireboat 73, out of the Port of Miami, as well as four new helicopters. We have two frontline uh, AW-139 Augusta helicopters, one Air Rescue South, one Air Rescue North, and then we have two additional helicopters to spare. Uh, also on April 4th, we added Rescue 13 to East Kendall area and Rescue 74 uh, to the Cutler Bay area. On July 1st, uh, we have scheduled Rescue 17 to go in service, which will be in the Virginia Gardens area. Next slide. In 2021, we had uh, two stations, uh, one station 29, which is in the city of Sweetwater. Uh, that was a knockdown and a rebuild, so it was a privilege to have that station open back up April of 2021. We also had a groundbreaking of station 68, which will be our Dolphin Mall station. Uh, MDFR has had the privilege of serving the city of West Miami since 1981. Uh, in 2021, MDFR responded to 1,094 emergency calls within the city. 93% uh, of the primary responses to the city were provided by the station right next door, Station 40, as well as Station 3, Tropical Park. Uh, station 40, I guess we'll go to the next slide. Uh, station 40 consisted of 87% of the calls here in West Miami. Uh, station 3, 6%. We have seven fire rescue stations within five miles of the city. Uh, station 40, which has one rescue, one ALS engine. Uh, station 3, one rescue, one ALS engine. Station 47, one rescue, one ALS engine. ALS being advanced life support. Uh, station 14, one rescue, one ALS engine, and one battalion chief. Station 48, one rescue, one ALS engine. Station 13, one rescue, one 78-foot ALS ladder truck, as well as one air truck and Station 17, uh, one ALS engine and one anti-venom unit. So total units served in the city is 16 units. As I stated, one battalion chief, six rescues, seven suppressions, one air truck, and one anti-venom unit. 
Uh, daily there are 50 firefighters on duty assigned to these units serving the city of West Miami within the five miles. Uh, Rescue 13, as I stated, we did place that in service on April 4th to the East Kendall area. Uh, next slide is just a map, those stations that I just listed, just showing uh, all within the five miles to the city of West Miami. In 2021 incidents and response times, a life-threatening number of incidents was 608. Uh, MDFR's response time was six minutes and five seconds. To structure and other fires, we had 87 incidents. Uh, MDFR's response time was six minutes and 18 seconds. Uh, Life-threatening countywide average, we're at seven minutes and 27 seconds. Uh, here within the city, we're at six minutes and five seconds. Uh, to structure fires and other fires countywide, it's seven minutes and 38 seconds. Uh, city average is six minutes and 18 seconds. Uh, for up to March of 2022, for the life threat and incidents, we had 43. Uh, average response time for MDFR was six minutes and two seconds. To our structures and other fires, we had 15 incidents. Uh, response time was six minutes and 14 seconds. And again, just showing our county average for the first three months, countywide it's seven minutes and 19 seconds to life threatening. Uh, within the city, it's six minutes and two seconds. For structure fire incidents, countywide average is six minutes and 51 seconds. And here within the city, it's six minutes and 14 seconds. Uh, for 2021, our customer feedback survey, uh, what we do is 20% of our MDFR uh, medical patients, medical calls that we have, uh, we send surveys and get responses. Uh, here within the city, we had 19 city residents respond with an overall score of 4.96 out of five, a 99% satisfactory rate. Our countywide overall score is 4.88. As the fire chief, this means the most when I read these, uh, the feedback that we get from the customers we provided service to. This service incident was on behalf of my mother who is 88 years old and not very mobile. Uh, the respondent paramedics were very professional and caring. We very much appreciate their quick and highly competent assistance with much gratitude, a city resident. And, and that's what means the most to us when we get that, that feedback knowing we made a difference and served the public well. And that concludes uh, you know, my overview of 2021 presentation and uh, any questions you may have, you have it answered. Well, first of all, it's, uh, it's an honor to have you here on International Firefighters Day. I think today's right. I think well, you guys should know. <laughs> um, obviously, the, yeah, um, the, the guys in Station 40, I've gotten to know them a lot better in the last year. They're, aside from excellent people, um, incredibly service-oriented for the community, and they are, they are part of our city like probably no other fire station in Miami Dade Fire Station in their cities. They are, they are incredible. La, la, la familia, the, the 40. <laughs> um, we also have to be really blessed that we have the fire station so close in, in our cities. I mean, so close to all the residents. Those, those one minute uh, differences in the county average to the city average, you guys tell me, I mean, on, those life threat, on these life uh, threatening incidents have to be massive that, that minute. Um, and for that, we have to thank a lot to also Commissioner Sosa, who was instrumental in bringing that that uh, that station there. Um, Chief, your you, your guys are doing an amazing job. We're very thankful um, for the job they do. We're, we're we're I think personally, on behalf of the residents, very happy in the service at the county that your department is is uh, is is uh, doing for us. And um, I don't have any questions. I mean, frankly, I'm, I just want to thank you. If, uh, for, for the job that your guys are doing on, on your behalf. Thank you. Well, again, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Same goes here, Chief. Thank you for all <coughs> you do. Thank you for your leadership, your service, uh, to all the men and women of the uh, Miami Day Fire Department. Thank you. Thank you. I have something to say, Mr. Kominski. Yes, sir. It's a nice last name, very <laughs> Polish. Uh, Mr. Kominski, let me tell you, a <laughs> husband different times I travel out of Miami in different countries and for some reason some accident has been a fire something has been around the world and when we're talking about I am from Miami the people always make a reference to the fire department that our people go to different parts of the world to help and to teach the, the, the local how to help so as a resident, and I mean, like me, most of us, all, all of us, we are very proud of that work. Miami Day Fire Department. We are very proud to have these two millennials here. Well, no, no, one millennium. This is not a millennium. <laughs> but we're very proud to have here two members to 
to the fire department, really, congratulations. It's an honor that you visit us in the way you do your work. Thank you. Well, thank you. Honor is all mine to be here this evening and, and to provide the service to West Byron and we are, you know, your fire department. And it's a true honor and privilege to serve uh, you and the residents of West Byron. Thank you. Thank, thank you very Chief. much. Thank you, Chief. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. All right. Um, I think we have some of the reports to get. Uh, oh, yes, please Ms. go ahead. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry to interrupt. If you hear a sound and it sounds something loud, our police officers are training downstairs and they're practicing with a bolo wrap. And oh, so um, don't think that there's anything wrong going on. Yeah, I, was wondering, I was wondering about that. Be at <laughs> ease. Be at ease. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, I think uh, item seven. Item seven before the city attorney. There's no report by the city attorney at this point. Beautiful. Uh, Mr. Alonzo. Uh, my only report is uh, ongoing projects. Uh, so we have currently two projects in design, uh, a, a couple of spot drainage projects that we're wrapping up, and a uh, phase 1B of the water projects, as well as phase 2. Uh, but uh, we're, we're near completion on design on those two projects. So hopefully, uh, as I said in the last meeting, hopefully you guys will be seeing uh, uh, us moving forward with our RFP in that <laughs> uh, in the near future here. So that that's all I got right now. Okay, I, I just just want to I, I guess not make a report, but um, kind of report to a conversation that we've had um, mm -hmm. on drainage projects. Um, I think that we're gonna go ahead and try to find what are the biggest dr drainage issues in the city. I know uh, the vice mayor had one that he had brought up before on one of these streets. What are the are the biggest uh, flood incidents that we we have still in the city to see if we we attack them with the American Rescue Plan um, funding? So if if you know of any that are prevalent to you, please communicate that with the manager, um, and that way we can start to track them. Go ahead, Madam Manager. Don't you have a list? Of I, these do. Areas? I do. I um, do. The 60th Avenue and uh, Southwest 11th Street that appears to be the worst area in the eastern part of the city there's another one uh, uh, from a resident that lives on um, near there it's, it's, it's near it's, it's between it's 59th and 60th right yeah yes sir and it's a corner house and and uh, she sent pictures yes sir of, of how badly it floods when it rains yes sir and, and so I believe that there is an assessment and we can obviously share with the mayor and r sort of re reintroduce you to to that area that seems to be the worst spot um i believe a while back ago uh we sent that to you and you prepared mm -hmm. for the city an estimate of a couple of scenarios that we could be looking at as far as drainage improvement yeah so i, I don't want to go too deep right. in, onto this on on this i just right. want to make it aware so in case you there guys are, are three or four pockets yeah in the, I, I, in the there's city. not that many but we I, mm -hmm. I, we we had a conversation about taking them together yes um to make that bid uh more cost efficient yeah currently we have two two spots that were on our list that we that we are addressing currently um but yes if if you know, I think we need to discuss exactly how much funding we have and then how much, uh, how many uh, things right. we can address on the list. So uh, obviously the more we put together and package to put out an, uh, an RFP is going to be uh, more advantageous to the city in terms of cost. Um, so yeah, we want to try to get everything done at the same time if possible. All right, thank you. Does anyone else have anything for the engineer? No, nope. right, thank you. Madam Clerk, next item. Yes, item nine, committee reports. Report of the mayor. Uh, I don't have a report this evening. Any other committee? <coughs> item 10, unfinished business, none this evening. Item 11, under new business agenda items. Item 11, C. This is a first reading. An ordinance of the mayor and the city commission of the city of West Miami repealing and replacing chapter four, animals and fowl, article two, section 419, permitting dogs to defecate or urinate prohibited, amending language, including assessment of fine to owners of dogs in violation of this section, providing for conflict correction, providing for severability, providing for an effective date by Mayor Diaz Padron. This is the first reading. Can I get a motion? Motion. Second. All right, uh, call the roll. Yes, Commissioner uh, Suarez, had your vote? Yes. Commissioner Blanca? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Vice Mayor Blanes? Yes. Mayor Diaz Padron? Yes. 5 0, item passes. And the second reading 
is uh, is scheduled for June 1st, 2022. Thank you. Um, just a programming note here. Um, we have the mitigations item D and E coming yes. up now. Um, are, are the are the residents here for that? No. I don't see no. anybody on that item, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll call those items now. Part to defer them, but if we can move up item H um, to because I know we're here in the room now, and I know it's very important for a lot of people here. So but let's. Uh, let, let's do item D and E. I guess we're going to defer them. Yes, just uh, just defer this item until next meeting, if you uh, consider it, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, uh, let's defer items D and E. Um, yes. Can I get it all in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's take item H out item of order. H? Yes. I H request for reconsideration of approval of special use permit for plan development for 5920 Southwest 8th Street Renaissance Ballrooms Inc. by Vice Mayor Blanes. So before you go, Vice, uh, Vice Mayor, I, I know there's still some letters in the packet. Um, you want to let the the owner and applicant speak on this? Sure, that would be proper. Yeah. <clears throat> James Williams at the Office of Holland Knight, located at 71 Brickell Avenue. I'm here with my colleague, Hugo Arza. I'm also here with some of the property uh, owners, Rosa Carreras, um, and applicants represented by Lean Pinheiro. Uh, we, we welcome this opportunity for this reconsideration on, on the application, uh, because when we left you last, uh, there were some questions on the operations and, and the limitations and in terms of disabilities, of what disabilities would be approved and, and be permitted at the property. So. Uh, Ms. Aguilar actually said that her, small, her staff is small, but it's one of the most e efficient and easiest to work with staff members I've, I've had the pleasure. Thank um, you. So in that sense, it's, it's, it's been amazing. So Thank you. We've, had, um, we've had conversations, we've had meetings trying to address those concerns, and we think we have. Um, the last time we spoke, one of the main concerns was the age limitation. So what we did is we've, we've, we've updated a letter of clarification, or we submitted it, um, it was submitted on April 27th. We've revised the letter of intent and we've put a, a restriction. It says the project shall be limited to seniors who are 55 years and older in age. So that's the first restriction we've done. The second restriction is the, um, it, say, it states, should such patients older than 55 also be diagnosed with mental disabilities, only those involving memory care disorders, which would include um, Alzheimer's and dementia of the like, would be permitted at the facility. So these are the two conditions we put on the record and, and we hope that satisfies those questions. Thank you. Vice Mayor, go ahead. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm sure that you understand the reason why I brought this up for reconsideration. You know, there were a lot of things that were said that you know, I thought about afterwards, you know, that left you know, a lot of, a lot of open, open-ended things you know, that I didn't know how it would turn out. And you know, I'm, I'm sure that I speak for all of us here. I, I want this project to be successful. Yeah. I want it to be as successful as possible because that way, you know, it will guarantee that it will not have an impact on the residents of the city of West Miami. And that is not going to cause any issues or tax the resources. So believe me, yeah. I, I want you all to be successful and make a lot of money. Okay. So, uh, you know, w w with that said, I really do appreciate you know the the, the letters su submitted. And um, I believe that uh, they should be um, entered uh, on the record as a condition uh, to the uh, to the project. Is 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 this correct, Mr. Attorney? To the application, sir. To the, to the application. So without objection by the. Uh Petitioner, is that correct, sir? No objection. I, I, the only thing I would like to state is, um, at the last hearing, we had talked, we had talked with the neighbors, and, and I said on the record, um, but it wasn't in the resolution. I just want to put it, make sure that it's in there, because whenever I discuss anything with the neighbors, I want to make sure we adhere to it. Um, and so I, I saw in the resolution it was missing. I just want to make sure that we have from the garage that we're we're going to proffer to put signage that requires you to exit Southwest Eighth Street, um, and then when you make a right out of the garage, we're going to put additional signage. Uh, before you hit that parking lot along Salvinia Boulevard, that will say no exit through that through that parking lot, so that we reduce any movement to Salvinia Boulevard, the residential area. Um, but I did want to make sure that was on the record again. Right. Okay. Thank you. And and your presentation was great. You know, thank there you. was there's nothing uh, that bad to say about it. But you know, there's a lot of, a few things said that you know made me think about it. And 
you know, I mean, uh, when you do a project of this monu you know, so monumental, you know, you've got to have all your ducks lined up. Yeah. You know, and it seemed like, you know, the, the cart was being put in front of the bull. I mean, you know, uh, a project of, of this immensity, you go to the bank and you borrow $50 million, well, the bankers are going to want to know how you're going to make money. What's your, yeah. you know, what's your plan? What's, how are you going to operate it? What's your formula? Yeah. Right? And I, I hope that you guys have all that. So we do. We, we also okay. we have here Alan Soler. He has over 20 years of operations experience with, okay. with healthcare resorts. Um, we also have the property owner who, who would like her to speak. She, she can speak just sure. on, on her intent behind the project. But he has over 20 years of operational experience. So if you have any questions in terms of operations, he's, he's here to help answer those. Um, since this is a very, we're still in the preliminary um, part of the project, trying to get, make sure it's an approved project. It's one of those things that I agree with you. It's, you're almost putting the cart before the horse in certain instances um, because we need to make sure that this is a viable thing to go through and that the city would endorse it. Um, but, you know, I, I agree with you. The, the questions you, you, you stated, um, they were 100% valid and, and, and understandable, and that's why we wanted to make sure we got those addressed. Yeah, the building is beautiful. Now, what you're going to do inside is just a different story, and, mm -hmm. and, and that was my concern. 100% so. agree. Does anyone have any other questions? No. I, I don't want to. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I have, just a comment. For all you. Please don't forget tonight your papers. This mic. Your papers. Don't forget tonight. Uh, no, no, I, I definitely will. <laughs> I definitely will. But any excuse to see staff is always a great one for me. So. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I don't want to I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I'm I'm just a simple attorney. So the. This letter of clarification with the conditions, um, the project shall be limited to seniors who are 55 years and older in age. And number two, should su such patients older than 55 also be diagnosed with mental disabilities, only those involving memory care disorders, Alzheimer's, dementia, and the like will be accepted. That is part of the special use application, meaning that, correct, that if in the future, them or anyone who, any of us who, 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 who gets the property from in, from a sale or would be subject to that and can only change that coming for another special use application, right? Yes, sir. It really with the property. Is. So you said uh, they might sell or whatever, and um, it would be uh, any subsequent uh, owner um, is uh, totally uh, uh, obligated to the city of Westman. And, and you are obviously in, in agreement with that? Yes, in addition to the, the garage signage. Correct. Um, the, go ahead. Your mic is off, uh, Commissioner Blanis. Your mic. Suarez. Uh, I'm sorry, Bl uh, Suarez. D turn the mic on. Yes. I'm sorry. I just want to ask that we will, we will talk about a wall. You remember the, the wall? You're going to put a wall in the, with the lights and on yes. the side? Yes. Yeah, the, that's in the. You the agree with that? Yes, that's the, perfect, the design perfect, phase. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, um, does this require a vote to be put into the application, or is that just something that they have just agreed to? Well, it would be up to the commission to uh, request. At this point, uh, there's a, con a reconsideration without objection by the petitioner. So anything that you impose at this point will be part of the uh, application originally, and uh, it would have to be, uh, as I said, covenant with, uh, running with the land. So uh, it so would be up to you to uh, request uh, so that. Do you actually that. suggest that, c that Vice Mayor Blanis opens reconsideration and then? Yes, sir. OK. Um, Vice Mayor, um, make your motion. I, I, can, 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 can we provide the, can you, can you provide the wording on this? Would it be to withdraw the reconsideration? N no, it would be to, it would be to, um, to open the reconsideration to amend the application, right? That is correct, sir. So can, can you provide some wording on a motion for, for the Vice Mayor? Well, do uh, you want a motion now? Yeah. Motion. Well, a motion to uh, withdraw the, the reconsideration. Is that what you're talking about? Yep. Motion. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So, so, so the, the motion uh, would be the motion would be to wi withdraw the reconsideration uh, uh, since subsequently these letters with these conditions have been submitted and these letters and everything therein will be entered into the uh, into the record and you know and because I of made that, part of the application as the main part of the application and with that said I make a motion to I guess would be to withdraw 
withdraw the reconsideration? So, so, so your motion to, 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 to your motion is to withdraw the the, the reconsideration and um, amend the spe the ap the special yes. application to include the letter of clarification. The application is to include as anything that is said today. That's your motion, Fine. correct, Vice Mayor? Yes. You have second. A, you have a second. Please call the roll. Commissioner Suarez. Yes. Commissioner um, Blanca. Yes. Commissioner Chavez. Yes. Vice Mayor Blanes. Yes. Mayor Diaz Padron. Yes. Five zero item passes. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you don't Thank mind, you. since the property owner is here, would you mind if she says a couple Absolutely. words? Absolutely. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Always a valued uh, member of our community. First of all, I want to thank you guys very much for your help this evening. Um, it's a very exciting project for us. It's going to be a legacy for our city of West Miami. It's going to be something that we're going to be very proud of. Um, when we started over 25 years ago, we got a blighted property that was orange on the corner of Sylvania. A lot of the guys here know because we've known them for several years. And encouraged by our mayor, we bought the property. The city helped us develop the property. And it is what we have there today, which we are extremely proud of. Again, I want to thank the mayor, which I have not known yet. I wanted to thank you, Vice Mayor. I want to congratulate you on your new commission job. Thank and you very much. again, I want to thank you for giving us this opportunity. We're going to make you proud. Thank you. And, and I want to take this moment to thank you and your family. I know we, uh, you guys, uh, catered the meals for our homebound seniors throughout the yes. pandemic. So I want to personally thank you and your family on the, on, on the You know what they path. say, one hand washes the other, and we worked, we've always worked together with the police department, with the city, with our residents, with everybody who needs our help. We're there for you guys always, and hopefully it's going to be the same thing with this. This is going to be the envy of Miami-Dade County. West Miami is going to put its mark in this community. Thank you so much. Right, the palace, the palace, who? Right? <laughs> the palace who? Yeah. Right. Palace. palace to the Riviera. <laughs> <laughs> From your mouth to God's ears. Mr. Right. Mayor, a matter of uh, housekeeping. Absolutely, of course. Uh, this item, this specific item that uh, we suggested after, um, uh, subsequent to the discussion was not in the agenda. First, we want to uh, our rules. Uh, you can amend the agenda by a vote of the commission. And uh, we uh, would... Uh, uh, suggest that the uh, resolution to that was adopted on the last commission meeting be incorporated herein, and uh, the uh, new uh, uh, application that is going to the new items that are going to go into application to be made of part of that uh, specific uh, resolution. Okay. All right. So. All right, there, you know all right. I, I mean, went to law school, but let's say, so, 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 what, what, um, so what, what do you want us to do? Somebody I want you to amend the agenda to include <laughs> the new resolution. Okay, and, motion and, to and amend that, the that agenda requires to a fourth as well. Um, can I get a motion to amend the agenda to include the resolution? Motion. Second. Motion to second. Please call the roll. Yes, uh, Commissioner Suarez. Yes. Commissioner Blanca. Yes. Commissioner Chavez. Yes. Vice Mayor Blanes. Yes. Mayor Diaz Patron. Yes. So five zero item passes. So the resolution is incorporated in this agenda as part of the record with the new, with the conditions and uh, that were uh, discussed this uh, uh, I mean presented by the applicant. Right. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. And be entered as part as of part the of the uh, permanent resolution yes. and uh, project. With the prior resolution that was adopted. Thank you all. Good job, Thank you. James. Thank you. All righty. Now that the legal stuff is done, um, let's go back to the order of the agenda. Yes, we go to item F, Mr. Mayor. Should I proceed? Yes, please. Item 11F, Resolution of the Mayor and City Commission of the City of West Miami directing the manager of designate to install the official motto of the United States and the State of Florida in God we trust behind the dais in the City of West Miami Commission Chambers. The city manager shall have 90 days from the effective date of this resolution to effectuate such uh, installation providing for effective date by Mayor Diaz-Padron. Um, so this is a... Uh 
a matter that I that I hope I have all the support on the commission on um, to bring uh, to bring God back into 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 the lives of of uh, into government when in a, in a society when co coaches can't even pray on their football fields. Um, you know we shouldn't be hiding from um, God ever, right? So the in God we trust is actually the the national motto of the United States. It's the official motto of the state of Florida. Um, it's on every coin. It's it's not a it's not a controversial uh, phrase, and it shouldn't be. So I I would like, and I provide an exhibit. And I don't know if it's in the packet to be put somewhere here on the top or on the bottom on the top on the top of uh, above the seal. Um, and if I have the support of the commission, I would I would you know we would like to direct the manager to go. And about doing that. Do you got my support? Yes. That, I agree with that. It's part of our history. Before no. reading this, I would have assumed that that was already on the wall. <laughs> so I'm more than happy to support. Uh, can I get a motion? Motion. Second. Please call the roll. Yes. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. Commissioner Blanca? Yes. Commissioner Chavez? Yes. Vice Mayor Blanes? Yes. Mayor Diaz Patron? Yes. Five zero item passes. Thank you. Thank you. Next everyone. item. Uh, next item. Yes, item G. Resolution oh, of the Mayor City Commission up. of the City of West Miami directing the city engineer to analyze whether objective data supports lowering the speed limit to 25 miles per hour in certain areas of the City of West Miami. The city engineer shall report any and all findings to the City Commission within 60 days from the effective date of this resolution, providing for an effective date by Mayor Diaz Padron. So this item is very important to me. Um, walking the city during the, the last election, um, I think the thing I heard from every single resident on every street, no matter how, how much of a side street it was, is that my street is a highway. And it was that wording used over and over and over. Um, that difference in five miles an hour um, might sound little, but it is, it is actually massive when you look at the data on life-threatening injuries. On top of that, when, when you have a post 25 mile speed limit, people who go to the edge of what they can do will, will think, have to think five miles or lower, right? If, if you think you can do 40 on a 30, um, you know, you can do 35 on a 25. On, from an enforcement angle, I, I imagine the police, it's, it, for the police, it's, it's, it's the same as enforcing a 30 mile an hour limit, just five, five mile an hour lower. I mean, I don't, I don't see it as a, uh, I don't see it as a, an inhibitor to enforcement. Um, this is for the residential streets. This, this resolution would direct um, Mr. Alonzo to come back with a report on, uh, well, actually, could, could, could you speak to this? Yeah. The city of Coral Gables did it recently, and, and a lot of the city residential portions of the city of Miami have taken this step as well. So it's actually one in uniformity with the area. Go ahead. Yeah, I think a lot of, uh, a lot of the municipalities have, have done this. Um, I did reach out to the county, our contact over at the county, to kind of you know, get an idea of what this was going to take. And um, you know, initially, it doesn't sound like it's going to be uh, too big of, a, of an issue uh, getting the studies prepared and, and um, and getting that approved through the county, which we will have to do. Uh, I think one thing I had mentioned to the mayor is, uh, you know, we need to we need to follow the process uh, and just make sure that we do things right because uh, it will affect how you can enforce this stuff down the line. So, um, yeah, we'll come back. We'll do a full report on on what it's going to take to get there, um, and uh, not not only on in terms of um, the studies that need to occur to get that approved, uh, but also what, what the cost is going to be to obviously, you know, upgrade the signs and, and all that. So right. And, and I think part of the discussion with the manager was uh, her uh, suggestion that I that she believes that uh, the signage replacements could come from a half penny. Yes, as well as the cost for the study. So uh, we'll, we'll get a, a proposal if it's within my threshold. I have some some um, authorization in the code that will allow me to spend X amount of monies. If it's more than that, we will get a proposal from Frank and bring it at the next commission meeting. And uh, the, you, you mentioned to me that the because we did a citywide traffic study in 2020? Yes, 2018. Uh, 20, uh, I think it was when we initiated, initiated it. Initiated, completed yeah. in 20, 2020? Yeah. Um, that 
what we would probably need is just supplementary data. Yeah, hopefully, because we did, as part of that study, we did a speed study, so we do have speed data from throughout the city. Um, we'll just get with our, our traffic engineer and make sure that what we have is sufficient, uh, make sure that the county is, is going to be happy with it. It didn't sound like, uh, in speaking to the county, it sounded like what we've done might be sufficient, just because they're not, they're not looking for us to test every single street. They just want a, a data set from across uh, the, the, the city. So uh, I think what we have in the study would be sufficient, but we'll have to, to right. verify. So, so the process, just for everyone's knowledge, is we have to have a justification from our uh, engineer. Mm -hmm. At that point, we ask the, uh, the county. The county then gives a recommendation to the county commission. County commission actually votes on it as, as from, their, from their body. At that point, we can then pass an ordinance changing the posted speed limit. So it's a right. four-step process. It's, it takes a while, but I think it's well worth it. Um, please, if anyone has any questions for the engineer. This, is, this report just asked to come back with a report. I have a question for the engineer and for you. Uh, let me tell you something, Mr. Mayor. Uh, many years ago, I was, many years ago, I remember that was about 1967. I was, the, here was a company they call Allied Parcel Services. Was the only delivery company in, in Miami that delivered from Sears, from Luria's, from different stores to your home. You buy in the store and then you give your address and they deliver it to your home. And we deliver a lot uh, detergent from Sears to the Cora Gables um, families. Uh, that was, in that time, you know, was a different, everything, everything was different. And I remember I was making a delivery in Coral Gables, and the police in a motorcycle stopped me and put me in a speedy fine. I went to the court, discussing with the judge if he can't give me a chance, and the judge told me, I never forget, Mr. Suarez, if you are making deliveries or whatever, if you don't see a speed sign around, the speed limit in Coral Gables, in their county, is 30 miles. If you have any kind of moment that you don't know what the speed is, just go to 30, you will be legal. Never go over 30. I said, well, and then that time I never would go over 30 because <laughs> Those times, 30 miles, 30 dollars a fine was a week of work. We make 50, 60 dollars a week for work. That was in the 60s. And then 50 years ago, was in Coral Gables, a commissioner, a very nice guy. You, you, you know him, and you know him, and everybody knows him. Cabrera. Commissioner Cabrera, his father was a car racing in Havana. Yes. And Cabrera came here, he went to several cities with a proposal about a 20, put a speed limit to 25 miles. And I remember <clears throat> he had some difficulties with that, mm -hmm. especially with the <laughs> drivers from the school buses. They said if they have to go to 25 miles, they cannot go to on time to the pick up the kids and then deliver the kids in the afternoon. And they, uh, he has some difficulties with other people who have uh, transportation in the... So my recommendation to you, uh, you are the mayor, I'm the commissioner, but I think I can g give you a, a recommendation, right? Of course. You can be my grandson. <laughs> and may, before we make a resolution, make a study. Right. Call the police, call the engineers, because, you know, it may no, you be... Were, you were absolutely right. In fact, what this resolution is, is to do the study. I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying let's do... Well, I'm he not has saying, said the resolution. Right. It says to, to... Resolution of the mayor and city commissioner. To and to, to the directs direct Mr. Alonso. The manager doesn't install, so... No, no, no. Directs, no, that, that's, that's item F. Item G directs the engineer to analyze the data, and, and he's going to come back okay, and say what study... Let me see if I read uh, the... Uh, 
What item is E or F? It's item, item G. G. Item G. 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 G como... D. No, G como... Como, como good. Como good. Like God. Like G. God. Like G. God. Okay. Resolution of the mayor and city commission and city of Miami directed the city engineer to analyze. But we are going to make a resolution or you just... The, to analyze. The, the resolution is just... I'm talking to the mayor, please. <laughs> the, the, the resolution well, is I just. I don't want to confuse. No, the resolution is just to have Mr. Alonso come back to us but, uh, with, uh, to, with, with a I plan recommend to you study it. Making a study. Absolutely. And we'll get the police involved and get the engineer involved. Absolutely. And get involved because I remember Cabrera was here. Yeah. Ask him. Oh, but I, uh, you know Cabrera. Cabrera was, was the beginning of my political career. When, I was, when him, I was in high school, uh, I, I helped run his campaigns. Ask Cabrera I remember when he was a commissioner in Gable. Uh, um, thank you, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yes, this, this to clarify the resolution. Has Mr. Alonso come back and provide us a game plan for how to for a study, for to make to make sure what data we need, um, in order to see if it's uh, objectively a good idea. Um, so on that, can I get a motion on this resolution? Motion. Second. All right, um, Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Yes. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Blanca. Yes. Commissioner Suarez. Yes. Commissioner Chavez. Yes. Vice Mayor Blanes. Yes. Mayor Diaz Padron. Yes. Five zero item passes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for bringing this up, no. Mr. Mayor. And 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 I and I agree with Commissioner Suarez on on making sure the data um, is is there. Um, next item item I. I yes discussion in reference to possible change of polling place by designating the Rebecca Sosa Multipurpose Facility Building as the only voting venue for all elections. This is by Commissioner Blanca. Yes, I hope I can Go ahead. get your help on this. I think it's the best thing for the future elections to be done at Rebecca Sosa's pavilion. So I have I have thoughts, but I want to open it up to the table first. Does anyone have any thoughts on this? So I just want some clarity. All elections? Yes. So when you say when we say all elections, what is that? How about that early voting? Early voting? Does that include early voting? Well, I, I know you discussed it with the manager. So, so yeah. the, um, Madam Manager, do you want to answer your questions? Thank yeah. you. Um, and and then the point, this issue is on the agenda because of the lack of parking in front of City mm -hmm. Hall. And obviously, we're going to have now have early voting at the community center, and that displaces those seniors that do drive to the city and like to park in front. It displaces city residents for a long periods of time, extended period of time, and long hours of the day for, for continuous uh, parking. And so Commissioner Blanca brought to my attention the need to consider relocating it to the Rebecca Sosa multifamily, uh, multi-purpose, multi-family, multi-purpose <laughs> facility. Um, the reason for that is obviously it's a nicer venue the poll workers are going to work very comfortably there. They have a kitchen and a very nice restroom facility, just like we have here and next door. Big. But the voters will have more opportunity for parking. Um, right, and, and, and if I can cut you off, what has always frustrated me is, and I, I know that we have to get the elections department to sign off on this if we choose to go that route, but what has always frustrated me was that on, for on election day, on, for the early, uh, for an election day, the people from our precinct, which our precinct, the, the precinct that we have is follows the lines to, of the city of West Miami completely, right? There's there's nobody else in our precinct except city of Miami, city of West Miami residents. Right. And our precinct has to go vote outside the city. That's right. And it's always frustrated me that people from outside our precinct vote at the Rebecca Sosa multipurpose, oh. and it's never made any sense to me why we why our residents have to go to Open Bible when people from outside our city then go to Rebecca Sosa. So that, that to me would be an incredible recommendation uh, off the bat just on that. Um, on everything else, uh, what, what are the elections that would, that would cover? It would cover uh, election day? Election day, early voting. Early voting. City of West municipal Miami, races. municipal elections, and uh, the primaries. Okay, so, so and November, of course. So my position, and I want to hear from the table, my position is I think it's a very interesting idea, especially for election day. Um, obviously, I would want it to hear back from the elections department, um, which we have to anyways because yeah. they, they approve. But, uh, but I think it's a very interesting idea. And on election day especially, I, I would be very in favor. But I want to hear 
from the table? Um, I think this was brought up in the past. And I believe that it wasn't well received. I mean, it makes all the sense in the world, but uh, my manager, if you're gonna elaborate a little bit, of, of, you know, because I think this was, this was suggested in the past. And I remember you saying something about the people from the elections department not liking it there. They liked it more at the, at the senior center because you know, it was better situated for them. Well, the poll workers seem to, to like the senior center, but it's been years. It really has. And I don't, rem I don't know if you remember, um, commission commissioners, that we have two precincts, right? An area it had the 426 precinct and 427. Now we only have I know, one we only have one. But in the past, even residents of the city of West Miami had two voting places, the community center and the actual church on Southwest 16th Street, yeah. where the charter school is at now. So it doesn't make sense to have city of West Miami residents you know, united the two, they, the elections department united the two precincts into one and have us going to vote outside the city. I think it's a transition, like everything, people have to get used to it and now is a good, I think, trial run to put it at the um, multi-purpose facility building at the park and, and try to have people start to identify with that. Uh, with that venue, but I of mean, course, the, the the elections department is the ultimate. They are the of that. ultimate decisions, and for that, I will, you know, I will invite you to listen to the clerk. She's done some preliminary right, right. So, but work be, on be, that. Before before we listen to that, I guess the the point I'm trying to make is. I have something to say. Go ahead. In this case, I think the most important thing for us, for the residents, is what about how many days. Are going to wait to close the rec? No, we're not going to close the, the rec. That's the building. The only thing that, well, w the building is also rented for private parties. I know. So for early voting, we would have two weekends where we would have to block out the calendar and not rent it for any type of event. Mm -hmm. Once the equipment is in there, it's basically the jurisdiction of the county. We cannot enter that site. This year, we have a nine-week summer camp program. A matter of fact, usually our summer program is 10 weeks when most other programs in Miami-Dade County is a six to seven-week program. Mm -hmm. So we provide a longer summer <coughs> camp program. Well, my question would be, can we use the building and the rec be open? Yes, of course. Yeah. That does not affect it the- It's the totally separate? Yes, sir, absolutely. So, so you check with the yeah, yeah that was that was going to be that was going to be my next. The children, because to me, here we have a problem with the park. But the last elections, there you uh, some spaces were just for the voters, and now I don't know if there you have to do the same thing, some spaces for the voters. Yeah. But the most important thing that you have to put in the balance is what about the children, mm -hmm. the wreck? Thank and you, thank you for bringing you that have, up. Thank you for bringing that elections. up, Commissioner. Uh, and my question to you, Madam Manager, is did you take under consideration all the, the activities at the wreck uh, concerning the children and the summer camp and the after school uh, service that we provide? Well, ever, the after school basically starts right after the early voting cycle. I understand that to be, now that changes every election cycle. Your August elections are all, they don't fall on the same date every two years, but they are consistently towards the middle of August. That's the time then when the kids start going back to school. You have kids that go to parochial schools, other kids who go to public schools. So the kids are not on the same schedule in going back to school. Is the, um, I'm sorry, if I can interrupt It's you. okay. Is the, is the traffic, is the parking <coughs> situation in the, on the weekends, right, in, on that two week, in that, in that two week period of early voting, or the weekend part, is, is, is the parking situation bad during the weekends at the rec? No. Uh, I, I don't mean, I mean bad meaning that is there's a lot of activities. I, Unless I it's rented during the weekends no, for a birthday party, but what we would do in this case would be have to block those two weekends off completely 
-hmm. to allow parking for voters only and poll workers. Excuse me. Go ahead. Yolanda, when you're talking about a party, it's a Sunday or a Saturday. When we're talking about election, it's 15 days. Monday, Tuesday. So right. yes, compare what, a party with election. No, what, election, she, what two she's two weeks. what she's talking yeah. about is blocking off the um, the rentals the for rentals. those for yeah, those two weekends. Blocking the rental, but right. my question could be a question to all of you: Is that the elections are two weeks? A special um, a special election, uh, November elections. Um, um, the elections are uh, before the date, are two weeks, always are two weeks, mm -hmm. or longer. So yeah. So, so, so festivities, so a, a, a wedding, or a bed is a Sunday, it's a weekend. I'm not talking about that, it's one or two days. I'm talking about the space of the, the time, two weeks for election. Now, check with John and you, especially the people who have young kids. So I, I, I think from, and, and, and just, just to get a poll of the, of the room, <coughs> excuse me, um, for election day, right? Forget about early voting for now. For election day, for uh, November elections, are we all in agreement that it is a, is a better site for our residents to open Bible Temple? I, I, I believe so, I do. Because they, every, or we have to go to Open Bible Temple right now on Election Day. Yeah. I think that location is better for us if the county that were to allow it. That's what I think. <laughs> so, so the Elections Department will actually have to change and issue new voter registration cards. With um, I, yeah, they would, have to, they would have to issue new, yes. new voter registration cards. With, um, with a new address. Madam Clerk, I don't know if we have information on that. Okay. For Election City of West Miami elections, the polling place designated is for 26 that you can change by ordinance because our code of ordinance provides for the for that designating a polling place section 223 is polling place designated which is we can change by ordinance and we and can change by, by ordinance, ordinance what for the, the for the November by elections? Any, no, no by no, any no, municipal, for elections. municipal elections West Miami Understood. municipal elections county elections they may they have the ability to change polling places, re, uh, I mean, relocate polling places. And as a matter of fact, I was in conversations with Joanca Dominguez. She is the polling place coordinator at, in Miami-Dade County Elections Department. And I, before this um, discussion took place, I had already uh, had a conversation with her, making comments to her that it was for me, I didn't understand why the city of West Miami residents had to vote at a place, at a site that was outside right. our city's boundaries. And if there, is, if there wasn't any possibility of us change, of that to be changed, and she told me that yes. And uh, actually, I spoke with her today, and uh, the only requirement that uh, she says in order to submit the, the, the request to the supervisor of election who ultimately will authorize that change is to the consent of this commission to let them know that we, uh, that we have intentions of or, or request to change the polling place from the Templo de la Biblia Aglieta to the West, Mi to the West Miami Rebecca Sosa building. Now, uh, a clarification, I do not think that what has been approved already for this coming primary and general elections, mm -hmm. early voting has been already approved. I, I can call Miriam Rivera, the, the coordinator for uh, early voting, but I don't think that can be changed as, as, as this, at this point. For August, correct? For August nor November, because that's a process that has, is in, in route already. I don't think that can be changed. I can get back to you on that. Well, let's do this. And if you if you if you would allow me, you know, this is your item, yes. uh, Commissioner. But uh, let's let's do this. Let's. There's three different elections. There's municipal elections. There's the early voting site, mm -hmm. and then there's the election day. I think we're all in agreement that election day would be better. The residents would be better served at that site if it's possible. And and going forward, they would be better served. Is there any comments from the commission on the municipal elections? Go ahead. Okay. 
I personally think that if we're going to do this, we need to do it for all elections, Agreed. all of them. There cannot be any ambiguity to the resident and voter on where they are supposed to go and vote. So it, 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 municipal elections, early voting, and, and election day. I think it all needs to be in the same place. Right. On, on election day, on early voting, I'm not as concerned. I mean, look, I, 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 I agree with you. I, let, me, let me start there. I agree with the uniformity is good. I'm not as concerned. Let's say the manager comes back. I think the manager should talk to the two and, and bring back more information on whether that's uh, that, that two-week period at the rec is, is a good idea. That's, yeah, but that was my other Yeah, but my other I'm issue. not as concerned because early voting, as we all know, you can vote at any site in the county. So a lot of people will vote next to their jobs. People vote on the you know on the way to pick up their kids next to their school. So it's not as important to me as the election day voting, um, where obviously that's you, you can only vote at one site. You're, you're assigned site. Um, so for the municipal elections, are we all on the same page that they should be at yeah. their Vegas also? I, yeah. I are, 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 is there any is there any other opinions on that? No. The table may study whatever they want. I just give you my. No, no, I, no. I understand. I, but because what I, I would like to, I would like, I, on the things that we agree on, I would like to move. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to sit and put it for another agenda, another agenda. When it comes to putting the election day, uh, you wanted to talk to to the election department. I would suggest, you know, doing a resolution right now from the table, you know, urging the the. the uh, with our with our opinion on the election election day voting should be at that site for precinct four twenty six for the for the election for the municipal election you know if 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 everyone is in agreement on that I say we put a first reading on the next meeting um, but I'll I'll let that I'll let Commissioner Blanca deal with that that's her item um, for deal with the manager on on that um, I say that we move forward. We we do an impromptu resolution from the table here. If we have, you know, if we're all in agreement, we amend the agenda to include a resolution urging the supervisor of elections, of Miami County, to put the election day precinct for a precinct 426 uh, at the Rebecca Sosa multi-purpose facility. So, so with that, can I get a motion on that? A motion for and Commissioner Blanca. Will this will this be for all elections? No, this is this is just Municipal? urging. This is just urging the the county the county of elections department to move the voting precinct from for precinct 426, which is only West Miami, to uh, election day voting to the Rebecca Sosa Multi Purpose Facility instead of the Open Bible Temple outside of the city. Okay. So I have a motion for Commissioner Blanca on her item. Yes. Sir. And then do I have a second from anyone? Second. Okay, uh, call the roll on that. Yes, uh, Commissioner Suarez. Well, if it's not broken, don't fix it. I tell you. To me, this has been working so so far. It has been working well. On 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 which which issue are you talking about? On the, the elections now it has been happening here very well. Right. No, I, so this is not talking about the the city elections. This is talking only about. This is only just to clarify. This is only talking about. The election day in the, in August and November, election day. Countywide election. For um, for that election day, which right now you and I you have to vote at Open Bible Temple outside the city. You're talking about election coming now in August. In yeah. August, November. Mm -hmm. In November. Yeah, only election day. Only only. Uh, election day. Election day. Where right now you have early to vote. Early elections. At, no, this is not talking about early election. This is not talking about early voting. Only for the election. Election day. day. Where were you? Where you today have to vote in Open Bible Temple outside the city? If I know. Yeah. So that, that you know, there's where other people, by the way, people from outside the city mm -hmm. have their precinct at the Rebecca Solside multi no, 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 no. Yeah. The, the only point I see is what the Commissioner Blanner said: if the election department have to change the the address in the in the voter registration, right? For for one election or one, for one day. This is going to be a, to me, it's going to be, be a problem for them. Yeah, that, I mean, that's up to, well, that, I think that's up to them, but it would be going forward, right? It wouldn't well, be just for this election. And, and, well, like the city clerk said, it might not happen this year. Right. It might just not happen this year at all. So uh, uh, come August and come November, 
nothing's going to change. And, 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 and knowing government and bureaucracy, <laughs> bureaucracy, the way it works is we're probably, going to be, we're probably going to be stuck w w with the same precincts. But going forward next year, in 2023, um, I mean, uh, right, 2024, you know, if we urge them now to and request that they that they do it, maybe by then, you know, we can we can have it done. You know, everything in government takes a long time, so we might as well ask now ahead of time. Let's be optimistic. Maybe yeah. it will happen sooner. Well, I, I I mean, right now, as the mayor said, we have outsiders, residents that live outside the city of West Miami, come into our you know the Rebecca Sosa uh, right. building to vote. So why not us? Exactly. Why not West Miami residents? It doesn't make any sense. So, so I, that's why I second the motion. In the last election, they they yep. were voting in, in the yes. Rebecca Sosa people from the out of the city, mm -hmm. yes, the district, yes. Yep. That's so precinct it's, it's, 428. 426 and yeah. 427. No, no, only 425 or 427. 427, we, we, 26. We, we, vote, we voted open Bible. Bible. Yeah, open Bible temple outside the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some other area. I in understand the side what you mean city. because the 27 <laughs> was down the little church. Right. And they moved there. Mm -hmm. No, I vote yes. Okay, let's go. Yes, okay. Continue, continue May, the roll call. Yes, we have a motion. We have a second. So, Commissioner Chavez, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. Commissioner Blanca. Yes. Vice Mayor Blanes. Yes. Mayor Diaz Padron. Yes. Five zero item passes. Thank we you. We will be providing you with an update immediately uh, as soon as tomorrow. Um, and Mary, you're going to reach out to the elections department. I'll be talking to John Michael, and we're going to send you an update on this. Uh, but it, it can be done. And and please com please continue working with Commissioner Blanca on on this item. Yes. Um, next item. Thank you. This item is uh, item uh, J, discussion in reference to 4th of July 2022 slash City of West Miami 75th anniversary by Mayor Diaz Padron and City Manager. Okay, I brought it up, but I think this is uh, anyone's item. Um, it, July 4th is coming up. We better have one this I year. I think we better have one. I think people have spoken very loudly that they want the events back, um, especially one as popular as that one. Um, I don't know what it is to discuss except maybe going out to bid for the fireworks or, 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 re, or redoing the fire contract for you know how it's been, the fireworks. I don't know if we still have that contract. Mr. Pena would have to educate me on that. Um, and the watermelons. <laughs> and the watermelons. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead, please. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Commissioner, Vice Mayor. Good evening, Mr. Pena. I have reached out to the company that provides us with the fireworks, and I was going to give it to the manager for the next uh, commission meeting, but they have provided us with a proposal for fireworks, and I believe the it went up slightly. We usually spend about ten thousand, and I believe the proposal is like for twelve something, twelve and change. Uh, so if you will, if you're going to have the event, we need to commit to them because they run out of uh, actual pyrotechnic people that are able to fire off the fireworks. So since tonight you have amended the agenda, I would suggest that uh, give the manager a cap uh, as far as for the fireworks cost, and I will provide her with the quote that I received. Okay. I, I want to add something to that, Mr. Mayor. I don't believe that we have time to actually physically go through that sealed bid process. However, we may reach out to other vendors. And I mean, this, this company that did it for us did a great job. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not that. It's just right. that we want to follow the code. And the, the code says we should try to procure other prices. So get, get with the attorney on that. Obviously, mm -hmm. when it comes to the pricing, um, I think we all have to decide whether we want to move forward with the event. Here, Mr. Commissioner Chavez hasn't spoken today, so <laughs> He's an expert. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I, I grew up in this neighborhood, as you did as well, and I have a lot of fond memories of going to these types of events growing up, so I think we need to start bringing these back for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I like, <coughs> may I, may I? Go ahead. I like to make a friendly, so, Mr. Madam Manager, 
Yes, sir. I want to, I'd like to make a friendly suggestion to you and to Mayor Padron, Diaz Padron. In this case, for the 4th of July, the fireworks, I'd like to make a friendly suggestion. Uh, go and make a visit to Commissioner Rebecca Sosa because she always, or oh, many times, she has been helping the city with the funds for the, and the, we have been after the pandemia, we should, if we can, have a nice fireworks. And then uh, I s suggest to go and visit the commissioner, Sosa. He may be, she may be do something. I think that's a very good suggestion. I think we can do that. I think so. I think, I think that's a good idea. We, c we can drink coffee and, <laughs> and ask her for a donation. I'm sure, okay. I'm sure she will be all ears. Um, Absolutely. That's a very good suggestion. Uh, so, uh, how do you want to move forward? Um, Mr. Pena suggested uh, giving I you a cap, but what, how do you want to move forward? I think, uh, again, an impromptu resolution would be necessary, uh, and it would be a resolution of the mayor and city commission of the city of West Miami authorizing the city manager to secure prices for um, the firework display for the 4th of July mm -hmm. and further authorizing a cap not to exceed $13,000 to be funded from the special events account for the West Miami Recreation Center Enterprise Fund mm -hmm. and providing an effective date. Okay, that wording sounds good. Can I get a motion? Motion. Second. Okay, call the rule. Yes, Commissioner Chavez. Yes. Vote. Commissioner Blanca? Yes. Commissioner Suarez? Yes. Vice Mayor Blanes? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Mayor Diaz Padron? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you understand that I have to like generate minutes of this? How many amendments to the agenda? <laughs> so that's, so. A, that's a five out of five, right? So yeah. four fifths vote, the, the, the agenda is uh, amended and the item is adopted. <laughs> um, this is also, we, we contemplated adding on the city's 75th anniversary, because we're gonna have fireworks, so you might as well do it. Um, the city's 75th anniversary was in April, but obviously we were in election, and things got complicated. So we'll just add it on to this event as a, as a writer. So, um, and I think that's a good idea that the manager had. So, next item. Mr. I Mayor, may I, may I go back to this item Absolutely. and suggest something? <clears throat> I know that you all had appointed and uh, under the previous administration had appointed a committee to serve. I think we should have at least one meeting where we <laughs> can get something with substance to work with in, in terms Absolutely. of the anniversary uh, Absolutely. committee. W w was that committee ever finally fully appointed? It's a committee they were appointed. one right there. Yes. I'm in Chavez Senior. <laughs> Good. Okay. Perfect. I like that idea. Um, <laughs> right. So that we can get an idea of what other, what other things we could bring on July 4th to the park for the residents and so yep. we Absolutely. can get them to, you know, to participate. That, that's, a, that's a very good idea. Beer, probably. <laughs> <laughs> No she wants water, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. got to bring that so, back. So, um, is this a, a committee meeting that you would like to chair? That you would like publicly announced? Would you like staff no? In, to in fact, in fact, um, if if everyone's okay, if everyone's okay with it, um, Commissioner Chavez, do you do you want to you want to chair that meeting? I'll chair. It. I think that think that would be a a, bit, be a good thing. So um, we'll have Commissioner Chavez chair that meeting of, yeah. of the residents, Perfect. and Perfect. and um, that way we have someone from our body here, and uh, I think that works. Good. Yeah. Um, would you be okay if we schedule that meeting for next week? You it's would schedule. I mean that, that you, you you schedule that you schedule that with with Commissioner Chavez and and the board. Um, okay. I don't think we our schedules no. really matter there. So no. schedule that in private with Commissioner Chavez yes, and and the board. Um, next item, please. Yes, item 12 consent agenda items. You have one, two, three, four items for if the consent does, agenda. Does anyone need to pull any of these items or can we take them all together? Don't take it all together. Okay, can I get a motion? Motion. Second. Um, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Items okay. pass. Item uh, aren't you guys glad I brought the consent agenda items? Yes. To, uh, you know, onto the agendas? All right. Um, Item 13. Yes, good of the uh, order. I got something. Go ahead. All right. I, um, th this is a, a, uh, I'd like to make a few comments. 
in regards to uh, the manager's uh, report. Um, Madam Manager, the street sign project. Um, I think that you need to make an effort and that you need to uh, allocate the manpower necessary to move this project along. It's been, I mean, this started with Mayor Moina. We have Mayor Rodriguez, and now we got- Street signs, you mean entrance streets, signs or, or no, the- street The block signs. ones. The block ones. The avenues and the streets. Clarification. So now we have Mayor Eric Diaz Padron. So we've had three mayors in this administration, and that project, you know, is still, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's to my satisfaction, it's, it's not. You know, we have green street signs still in some areas. We have small signs in some areas where there need to be the bigger signs. We have bigger signs in some areas where we need to have the smaller signs. We have the smaller signs with no, with no rectangular new decal, you know, uh, depicting the city of West Miami logo. We have big signs that with the circular sign uh, logo for the city of my uh, West Miami uh, that that they don't have so so it's, it's a mismatch of street signage that we have in reference to streets and avenues so I really really hope and you know what I've gotten so many excuses you know that I uh, I'm distraught I mean I don't know what to think I don't know what to say anymore and I've said these very words sitting here at other commission meetings. So I implore you to find the will to allocate enough manpower to get this project moving. So on, on, on that note, and, and I, I wanna close out the meeting, but on that note, uh, you know, to, to, to your, not to your point, but to a, as, a, as a supplement to that, if we can just find some uniformity, because I, I, I will say that, that that thing where some of them say West Miami, some of them have a logo, some of them are big, some of them are tall. You know, well, if we can just find some uniformity going forward, I think that would be well, very helpful. Well, uh, well, Mr. Mayor, what, what we decided was that th there's some there's some uh, you know signs that are that are a little taller, and we decided mm -hmm. to put those on the main thoroughfare. I remember, like A Street, 57th Avenue, 67th Avenue, uh, Sylvania. And those will ha would have the circular logo. In the interior of the city, mm -hmm. would be the smaller ones. And they would, since since the smaller since the smaller ones have a cutout, which, oh, is, re which is rectangular, Mr. Pana obtained some of these Got signs. It. So, you know, we did, we discussed the the uniformity issue a while ago, and we had all agreed that. You know, it wouldn't look so bad. I, I don't think it does because it's it's just the perimeter of the city right. that's going to have the circular ones, and then the interior. Okay. It, it's all going to have. But we we need to have it. We need to do it. We need to get this done. I mean, when when are we going to get this done? You know, when I when I retire from here, I don't know. Well, that then the one that that's never to get done. Then what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, let's uh, Madam Manager, so please Madam continue Manager, work with I the Vice have, Mayor. Do I have? You know, do you have something to say? Do I have, you know, uh, at, at least your commitment that you are going to, you know, give it the old college yes. try? Yes, you have, a, you have our commitment, but please understand before you leave this meeting that we've had real challenges. And the I, real I, challenges involve COVID and then all the other, it's like we come in here every day and we have to reprioritize our priorities. So it, it's not easy and I don't want to get into a debate. It's it's um, uh, it's I, been a I great want, meeting. I don't, want, I don't want to debate. You have no, no. I understand. It, but, but I've got. But I know I that they are for you are excuse excuses. Excuse. Please, but just just please. Definitely. Um, I, I think I, will. I think it's a I think it's a okay, it's, it's a priority of the table. It's a priority of of this entire commission. And I know I have spoken to you as well, Madam Manager, about yes, that. Sir. So I um, please please continue to work with the Vice Mayor on this and with all of us and keep us yes, up to Commissioner Chavez. Go ahead. Before the meeting closes out, I wanted to ask just so that it's announced again for those listening. I'm chairing a board now. I'm not sure who the board members are. 
we will be given the list. I think you might know one of them at least. I think so. Um, <laughs> um, but there's a there was a there was a board that was appointed. I remember my yes. appointee was Natalie Milian, mm -hmm. um, and that you will be given a list of who who's who is on that board, and it will uh, work around uh, your schedule. Um, the man the manager and and the clerk or whoever's going to take it, that on uh, will work with you on that. Um, and I'm sure you will do an excellent job, and I think it's important, and I think it might be a model going forward, hopefully, so don't, don't screw it up. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, thank you. With that, can we uh, get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion. Mo meeting adjourned. <laughs>